Thank you very much. Uh, you know, we got to be careful. We have to be nonpartisan. We cannot have this cr uh, crowd uh, look so partisan in the election. So I just want to take a moment and thank Donald Trump for making Islam an issue in the political campaign season <laughs> and for making supporting Muslims cool and anti-Muslim bias uncool. So thank you, Donald Trump. I think that way we are now nonpartisan. <laughs> And seriously, I think what America is providing us is an opportunity. And this is exactly what Islam teaches us. That with each calamity, there will come relief. With each crisis, there is opportunity. And we have to look at the opportunity before us today as American Muslims. Because America needs us. It is a turning point for America, as the Senator said, just as it is a turning point for Islam in America. We are Americans, and America is a land of opportunity. And we have to say that for America to win the war on terror, it will not win with bombs, it will win with ideas. And we, American Muslims, are critical to the theology of life that will help extinguish the hope of death. And we have to say that xenophobia is the opposite side of the same coin as terrorism. Both believe in hate, both believe in demonizing the other, both believe in destructive behavior as opposed to constructive engagement. But America is the place where all religions can reconcile with each other, where Muslims and Christians and Jews are here in freedom and opportunity to say no more to war, we will make peace with one another. So, we have to look to our young people, especially young men, who are going through so many crises in their lives as far as their identity and their future, they're looking to role models for courage. What is that courageous voice today? The courageous voice is found in the Quran that says, Ya ibadina amanu kunu qawamina bil qisli shuhadai billahi wa lo ala anfusikum o bil walidaini wal aqrabin. Oh, you who believe you have been made to establish equity as witnesses to, your, to God, even if you have to testify against yourself or your family or your community. So it is not just pointing the finger at others, it is looking at ourselves to say, are we standing for justice and equity or not? And our children need to see us standing for equity. Courage is found when, rather than saying that the other is wrong, the Quran says, repel evil with good, so that the one with whom there is enmity becomes as if he is your closest and warmest friend. So are we converting people from the side of apprehension and hysteria and justifiable anxiety? Not just write them off as racists. And I'm not talking about those who are on the far right, but people that we work with, our neighbors, people that we find in school. Are we engaging them enough to convert their anxiety and apprehension to one of solidarity with us? That is the voice of courage that we need to rekindle within that Islamic spirit that we find in the Quran. And finally, do we, and I salute ISNA for bringing us together as different organizations, but the Quran tells us that we are the people that are supposed to practice with each other patience and practice with each other mercy. It doesn't say practice by yourself. But it says, وَتَوَاصُ بِالْمَرْحَمْ That you will engage with one another in the practice of mercy. We need mercy in this society at this time, in our faith, in our country. And finally, the Quran says, those who are secure, الَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْوِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِذُلْمًا That they are the ones who do not dress their faith with wrongdoing. So if you dress your religion 
and all your rituals and follow it with wrongdoing, you are not secure, you are opposing your faith. <coughs> and if you are addressing patriotism with wrongdoing, you are not an American, you are un-American. That is the voice of courage that we need to take forward to this country. And as we celebrate Eid al-Adha, <coughs> we commemorate Abraham, the father of mon monotheism, that brought together all these religions and named us Muslims. And as we see the pilgrims go around the Kaaba, it means that we are going back to that message. We are going back to God, and we are demanding unity of faith, religious peace, concern for the other, mercy, compassion, and justice. That's the voice we need today, and I look forward to listening to everyone at this convention in delivering this voice to our country and to our community. Thank you very much.